Today, I want to talk about a Reddit post that my friends and I made last week on the Helldivers subreddit. Now, we spent a lot of time doing research into how the actual game mechanics of Helldivers 2 work, specifically regarding the spawns and difficulty of the game, and this information was all compiled in a post with example videos totaling up to around two hours worth of footage, uh, with proof of everything that we have stated here. Uh, my friends Psyker and Gergen did 97.23. 489% of the work, and uh, I just kind of sat there and annoyed them the entire time while they did it. But uh, regardless of that, I still want to go over this because I've seen a few videos come out regarding this topic already, and already it's only been five days and there are people getting the information wrong. So I'm going to do a very quick summary of the most important information inside of this post. The first thing we need to understand are the different types of enemy spawns that are in the game. So when you first drop into a mission, you will have static spawns. And these are the enemies that are around points of interest and outposts and things like that. They're just standing still and hanging out. These are based on the difficulty of the level that you selected. And otherwise, they will not change throughout the mission. So if there's, you know, 10 infantry sitting on a base, there's going to be 10 infantry sitting on that base the entire time. No matter what you do, you could drop a bunch of nukes, you could go poop your pants, it doesn't matter. Those 10 infantry are going to sit there and hang out the entire time. You have reinforcement spawns. These are enemies that come in from dropships or bug breaches. So if you alert a group of enemies and they shoot the flare in the air or the bugs start screeching into the air with the smoke coming out of their mouth, that's where these reinforcement spawns will come from. There are fabricator and nest spawns. These are the enemies that come out of the factories, or they come out of the nests when you're sitting near them. This only happens when the building is aggroed, so the buildings are treated as if they are units, and if you alert those factories or those nests, they will start producing groups of three infantry or three bugs at a time um, on a certain timer until you blow the nest up. Uh, and then once they lose aggro, they will stop producing those units. They do produce units throughout the match. However, it will only be like a single infantry unit being produced from an entire outpost, and it's every few minutes that this happens. So throughout an entire match, an outpost might spawn five single little infantry guys for that entire match if it never gets alerted. So it's essentially not an issue at all. The final section here is the one that is going to get you killed. All of these other enemies don't really matter, they're pretty negligible compared to patrols. And we'll talk about why these are such an issue in just a second. So what a patrol actually is, is a group of enemies that spawns somewhere within about 150 to 200 meters of the player, and they just start walking. As they keep walking, if they never notice you, they'll go to the end of the map, and they will despawn, they'll disappear. So. They're just like a temporary thing, but if they aggro onto you and you get their attention, they are pretty much there for the rest of the game. When you start a mission, there is a timer that starts, and every certain amount of seconds, a new patrol will spawn in. If they don't see you, they'll go past you and they will eventually despawn. This timer depends on the difficulty. Generally speaking, the timer will go down as the difficulty increases, as in, Normally, on a level 2 or level 3, it will take close to 4 minutes for a spawn to come in. However, at a level 9, the baseline is 110 seconds, so it's under 2 minutes. So you're seeing more than twice as many units on level 9 than on level 2. And not only that, but the patrols are going to consist of even more difficult enemies a lot of the time. But this isn't the only issue. This timer here that starts ticking and keeps having patrol spawn in, that's only a baseline. As you get more players into the match, this baseline gets multiplied, as you can see here. Now, we don't have information for what happens with a fourth player, but you can assume that the timer goes down even more. So instead of 110 seconds, you multiply that by 0.75, and if you have three players, that's how long it would take. So I think around 85 seconds or somewhere like that for the automatons here. Almost every minute, and a half you will have a patrol coming in. This is just the baseline number that you're starting with. So as the players go up, this baseline number changes, but this number can be affected by what you do inside of the mission. It's mainly affected by the following. Players being near primary, secondary, 
objectives, enemy outposts, and the extraction point. So as you get closer to a primary or a secondary objective or the enemy outposts, this rate will go down even lower until you complete these objectives. This rate can be affected all the way up to 50%. So what that means is instead of a 100 second spawn base with two players, you're now getting one every 50 seconds until you destroy that base, as long as you're in proximity of it. We have a graphic that shows what this looks like. So out, out to 100 meters from an objective, there is no effect on the spawn rate. But as you move closer and closer, every meter you move closer increases the spawn rate by 1% until you get to 50 meters or closer. At that point, you are 50% sped up, you're getting 50% more spawns. You're also affected by clearing out enemy outposts, so fabricators or nests. As you destroy those, you will get more spawns in the game. You'll get more patrols, which is very counterintuitive to how most people think the game would work. This only affects the spawn rate after you've killed 50% of the outposts. So the first 50% of the outposts won't affect the timer at all, but every outpost you clear after 50% will speed up that timer a little bit until you have cleared out all of the outposts. Player death affects this timer as well. When a player dies, it can decide to just randomly throw a patrol at you out of the range of the timer. So if I still had 200 seconds left on the timer, and a player dies, there's a chance that I might get a spawn within 30 seconds instead of 200 seconds, just because the player death screws with the timer. And I don't think this is intentional, but it is absolutely the case. And finally, the most important factor that affects this timer is completing the primary objective. Completing the primary objective will bring the base time to one quarter of what the original timer was. So if this original timer was at 110 seconds, it's going to bring me to 27 seconds instead. Or if it was at 200 seconds, it's then going to bring me to 50 seconds. And that is not counting any of these other effects. All of these effects here can actually stack on top of each other to the point where you could be getting 30 second spawns of patrols. So every 30 seconds, a new group of enemies is going to spawn on you. And that's why completing the primary objective, while this entire post was not meant to tell people how to play the game, I think it's very clear to us that completing the primary objective should always be the last thing that you do before you decide to extract. So if you're doing a blitz mission, just go for the primary objective and ignore all the secondaries because you don't have a big timer anyway. But if you're doing a really long mission and you want to go and do some secondaries, or you want to go and look for samples and the points of interest, do not finish the primary objective until you're done everything else in the mission, because you will absolutely get swarmed once this is done. Now, these following points have no effect on this timer, which is the main thing that causes difficulty in the game. First off, time spent in a mission has absolutely zero effect on anything that is going on with the difficulty of the game. If you are 35 minutes into a mission or five minutes into a mission, if you haven't done any of the stuff up here, the timer and on the patrols and the difficulty is going to be the exact same as it was in the beginning. Engaging in combat and using stratagems have no effect on this. I know that recently the CEO said that stratagem usage will spawn patrols randomly across the map. This is absolutely false. We have found using the UAV scanner that no enemies can spawn outside of a certain radius from players when it comes to patrols. Not only that, but they only spawn in based off the timer. You could throw down 10 different stratagems all at once and not a single spawn will occur near you. You can go ahead and test this yourself. You will see that if you and four of your friends sit in a group together and throw down every single one of your stratagems, you will not get a patrol. Breaches and bot drops don't affect the timer. The planet you're on and the mission type don't affect the timer, except for potentially blitz and eradication or the evacuation missions, because these are all completely different from the regular missions. So these are all much shorter timers and they have way different stuff going on. But the regular missions where you have 40 minutes on the timer, they're all the same. Being near a POI does not affect this. Using terminals does not affect this. People keep saying, hey, I used the terminal and I, I did this and that and a guy spawned behind me. That is absolutely 
not the case. The enemies, and we've had video, people send videos and saying, look at this happen, and enemy spawned right behind me. And if you listen to the video, two minutes before they touch the objective, you could hear the robots chanting in the background because they're walking towards this guy. So please do not listen to people who say using terminals uh, affects this. If you clear out the entire area and go and touch a terminal, you will see that it does not just randomly bring enemies to you. And completion of secondary objectives doesn't affect it. So completing uh, like the artillery or the radar dishes doesn't affect the spawn rate. Now there's a lot more detail in this post going on to exactly what affects the spawn rates as well. You can go look at this. The biggest thing to take away is that completing the primary objective will quadruple the amount of enemies that are coming in, so you really want to save that for last. The other huge factor on the difficulty of a mission that doesn't necessarily affect that spawn timer is players splitting up. So we have a few infographics here and I'll pull one of them up, which shows a few different setups here. So here is the infographic that we made describing how this mechanic actually works in the game. Every player has a circle around them with a 75 meter radius. So as long as both players are within 75 meters of each other, they count as a single group. They are a single entity as far as the game is concerned. So when that timer finally counts down, a patrol spawns in. Just one patrol, and that's how it should be. If you're outside of this 75 meter radius from each other, you are now two groups. You are not one group anymore. Because of that, when the timer runs out, you'll get two patrol spawns. In this infographic, we're showing them spawning near each of the players, respectively. However, these spawns do not necessarily need to go to one per player. This yellow player here could get both of the spawns, while the orange player doesn't get any of them. So if you imagine them being really far away from each other on the map, this player could be running around and not seeing any enemies, while this guy is getting swarmed over here. The other thing is that this spawn area for the patrols is based on the player location. And because of that, enemies can't spawn inside of the circle within a certain amount. However, that only applies to this yellow player. This orange player, their patrol could spawn anywhere out here, including right on top of this yellow player. So each of these players now has their own spawn circle and they don't care about the other players sort of uh, defense area, I guess you could call it. So this this spawn could come right here on this yellow guy and he could get this one at the same time and be completely screwed. If you have four players and they're all split up, once the timer runs out, four spawns will come in. And again, they could be anywhere. You could have all four of these spawns come right in on this blue character right here and none of these guys see anything. You could have three of them go on this blue one and one of them go on the orange. You could have two of them go on the yellow, two of them go on the green, or you could have one per player. It's completely random where the spawn goes. And finally, if you have players that are within 75 meters of each other and one of them is split off, that still only counts as two groups. So you can see these players are within 75, these players are within 75, and because they form a chain that is connecting within 75 meters, so the yellow and the green are not within 75 meters of each other, but because they're both near the blue player, they count as one group. So as long as one player is touching another player within 75 meters and you're all connected within that range, you count as a single group. And then this orange character is way outside of everyone else, but they still only count as two groups. So this is one group, this is the second group, and they're only going to get two spawns. But again, because of the mechanic, this orange player could get both of the spawns and these three players are just hanging out doing nothing. So always stay within 75 meters of each other uh, in some capacity. Again, not everyone needs to be in a bubble of 75 meters, just one needs to be within 75 and the other could be here and then the orange player could be down here. As long as they're within 75, they're within 75, and they're within 75, they all count as one continuous line connecting. So that was my summary of the post that we made. Hopefully this clears things up for everyone. If you have any questions, please leave them down below and one of us three will absolutely answer whatever questions you have. So thank you for watching. If you're going to take anything away from this, it is do the primary objective last and always stay together. Unless you're doing a really low level mission and you're just trying to get a bunch of common samples, in which case go crazy. Bye bye.